And even though we are a technology company, we're an information technology business, we're an IT services company, um, we're really in the people business. Um, while we're in IT, so we're in the IT services industry, we're really, we're really a people company by choice. Atrion culture is people. It is the family. Uh, it is this, um, this group that are, are coming together to, to do great things. The following special program is brought to you by Atrion IT Technology, Rhode Island College, Cardi's Furniture, and the Arpin Group. If I told you that some of the best investments Rhode Island has made over the last few years has been in buying land to maintain open spaces and in helping farmers not only survive, but flourish, would that surprise you? I'm Peter Arpin of Renewable Now, and that would not surprise you if you've been watching our tour and series. We started reporting on this way back in the spring of last year when we broadcast from the Grossmont Summit in Providence. In fact, we defined then, and we will define again today, the amazing return on investment these purchases have generated to taxpayers. When we come back from break, I am joined by Kevin McDonough, Rhode Island Land Trust, Max Hentz, Hillendale Farm, and the Ears Foundation, and Jennifer Fusco of the Westerly Land Trust as we continue our tour of Washington County, Rhode Island. Welcome back to Renewable Now. We are here in Westerly, Rhode Island, show two for the, uh, at the beautiful Westerly Land Trust building in downtown Westerly. So good uh, to um, greet Kevin. Kevin? Mc McDonough. McDonough. I want to make sure <laughs> I can goof that up. Rhode Island Land Trust Council, thanks so much for being with us. Jennifer Fusco, Westerly Land Trust. How you doing? Good. Nice to be here. And Max Hentz, Hillendale Farm and Ayers Foundation. Max, good to meet you and thanks so much for being with us. Real quick, a little bit about you, you and you. Okay. I've been involved in the land trust community since the late 1980s when I served on the Cumberland Land Trust Council in Northern Rhode Island. I'm from East Greenwich originally, uh, live in East Greenwich now, but serve on the Rhode Island Land Trust Council, past president of the council. The council is a consortium of land trusts in the state. It's been in existence for 10 years. Great. And we have um, membership of uh, the majority of all the land trusts in the state, which is, uh, there are 43 land trusts. And that includes the Westerly Land Trust. Absolutely. <laughs> so Jennifer, uh, the folks in the Westerly Land Trust had class last week, did a wonderful job. Tell us, though, about you. I, uh, I'm a board member of the Westerly Land Trust. I'm born and raised in Westerly, moved away for a little bit, and, uh, and happy to be back here and living living and being part of the Westerly Land Trust. And part of a great team, doing yes. a great job. Max? Yes, I'm a local farmer of uh, almost 20 years. My wife and I run an organic growing operation here in Westerly. Uh, and we recently started up a, a nonprofit that promotes practices and teaches sustainable agriculture to K through 12 students. I have enjoyed uh, actually being on your website and learning a lot about what you do. And, I, and it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful program. And we're going to talk a lot about it. Um, Kevin, let's start with just the um, kind of the mission of the council. Well, the Rhode Island Land Trust Council mission is to help facilitate the uh, land trust community statewide by offering services to the land trusts throughout our state, both private nonprofit and municipal land trusts. There are, there are two types. There are certain communities have municipal land trusts that are part of their town government, and then other towns have private nonprofit land trusts, and both are quite successful in their own right. And the Rhode Island Land Trust Council works on public policy at the state level. We work to help and facilitate the land trust with back office support on membership and fundraising. We also, uh, last year, began a statewide effort to get the word out about the great properties that are protected in the state called Land Trust Days. And it was so successful that we're going to uh, make that an annual event oh, that well, starts we'll again in, in August of this year. We'll so. talk about that. Let's talk about your role. I mean, uh, Westerly Land Trust is pretty diverse in a lot mm -hmm. of things on the rural side, urban side. But um, 
how do you help foster, because we have Max here mm -hmm. obviously, farming, community gardens, um, farmers markets, you know, local produce, mm -hmm. how do you help foster some of those things which are so important to this state? Absolutely. What I've done mostly with the Western Land Trust, so proud of that outreach, the community outreach piece of that and getting the community engaged and aware of what's available in town and that's something that I think a lot of people even who've lived here their whole lives don't know about. And we do that through um, through the farmers market that the Western Land Trust sponsors as well as the farm dinner which is a, a function of um, a wonderful outreach. It's, it's working with local farmers it's bringing people together and it's local chefs and I mean we we host this wonderful dinner on one of our properties so it's getting people really kind of dug in to see what what we're all that about. That is an in amazing Western. event I was lucky enough to be there last year it's a beautiful piece of land it's Great. a wonderful event it's it's so well staged and so well attended I know you sell out. Yes. Generally though how do you have do you work with local uh, farmers at all? Uh, do, you do, do you do other things to help promote uh, what they do here in the community? We have a right, wonderful symbiotic relationship. So um, we can use this building for, um, for educational programs. Um, we do lots of outreach with, um, with Max and what the, uh, the projects that he works on. And I'll let him talk a little bit yeah, more about Max, that. Be great. Let's talk about, um, because agriculture in uh, what we have seen over the past year on the Green America Hometown Tour mm -hmm. has been one of our success stories here in the mm -hmm. state, uh, which is very encouraging. So tell us a little bit about, about your farm. Um, is it any different as far as is it more green, more organic? And mm -hmm. then we're going to start talking about how that helped you migrate to where you created a foundation sure. for education and outreach. Absolutely. Uh, well, when, when we first got into this <coughs> business in the uh, mid-90s, we approached uh, restaurants and specialty markets, and uh, they were taken aback a little bit by, by organic and what that me meant. And uh, it was obviously advertised as being a, um, a chemical-free type of thing. And we looked at it a lot differently back then. We looked at it as uh, locally grown food and consumed basically in, in the same economy, in the same community. Uh, and we have been practicing that uh, philosophy uh, since then and developing individual relationships with chefs and owners of uh, specialty markets uh, and letting them know that we're here uh, to grow food for them to pass on to their customers. Uh, so our hands to theirs. So you're very direct. Very direct, yeah. No, to, no middleman. To the end user. I deliver it myself yeah. every day. We have about 20 customers. And uh, so, you know, we could get into the whole idea and the whole definition of organic agriculture, but in a nutshell, it's really uh, growing and consuming the, the food in the same community. Okay. That's very enriching, and that's really the organic concept. We're going to go to a quick break. We'll expand on that, and then we'll get into uh, the foundation. We want to take time to thank our many sponsors who, along with you, our viewer, continue to make this show possible. Together with the Arpen Group, Cardi's Furniture, Atrion, Rhode Island College, Handy Law, Merrill Lynch, and Ocean State Financial, and our newest partner, W.B. Mason, we have taken a great ride in 2012 across many cities and towns to major events have built our global audience using newspapers, radio, TV, and the web to over 200,000 listeners and viewers per month. We've done that by being graced with great guests, including governors and senators, government leaders, and true pioneers and innovators at schools, nonprofits, businesses, and on the streets of our cities. As Renewable Now continues to grow locally, regionally, and across the globe, we'd like other sponsors to join as partners and share in our success. If you want to promote across the booming green economy with a platform like no other, please contact us by emailing our staff at fiscalrecordings at cox.net. We'll call our co-producer and head of business development, 
Anne Marie Fisk at 401 603 2097. You can find the same information at our website as well. We are helping to transform the world. We'd love to do the same for you and for your organization. We are Renewable Now, the business side. So much for staying with us. Max Hentz, Hellendale Farm. Let's stay with that, Max. So for you, the organic farming is not only the chemicals you, you may not use, right. right? But also how you're delivering local and you're, you're kind of cutting out a lot of the transportation yes. systems. Um, tell us how that benefits sure. the consumer as well. Absolutely. Uh, well, energy balances uh, are really very much a part of this concept of organic growing. In the past, uh, that's been an uh, externality. Uh, we, we internalize that cost. Uh, another way of looking at uh, organic farming is um, looking at it as a more nutritional form of farming. There's been lots of studies and debates about whether organic produce is more nutritional than conventionally grown produce. I think we need to put that aside because it's really not what's um, salient here. What's salient is that uh, it's more nutritious because it's more enriching to the community where it is grown. Mm -hmm. That's really the whole idea of, of organic farming. And you mentioned that the food's almost still alive, right, when, it, you, de when, when you deliver it. Absolutely. It's uh, picked and delivered within hours, so it smells like it's living, and it actually is still living. It still has the turgor and the flavor uh, and, and, the, and the, the essence, the smell uh, that comes from the living vegetable. That sounds good, doesn't it? It's does. making, me, <laughs> making me hungry. Kevin, um, so how does your council fit into all this. I mean, in, in trying to help the different land trusts in the state of Rhode Island, and, and we're going to talk about maybe what's going on regionally and nationally and how sure. we fit in, but is a lot of what you're doing trying to enhance agriculture and farming, or is it more a lot of times pure conservation, or is it more access uh, to the public? W what exactly is your role in all of this? I'll give you a good example related to agriculture. The fact that uh, the land trust communities throughout the state have a number of different missions. Some are protecting our water supply, as was mentioned in the earlier segment. There's agriculture. There's also uh, natural habitat and biodiversity. That's a key element. Maintaining scenic vistas and, and views, scapes in the state, and keeping our rural character. It's all important elements. When it comes to agriculture, we believe, as the Rhode Island Land Trust Council, that getting the word out to the public of what an integral part of our economy agriculture is in this state it represents 170 million dollars in direct economic benefit to the state of rhode island and there's a lot of jobs tied absolutely there, right? yeah i absolutely. can actually chime in there there's about uh, 12,000 jobs wow. associated with the green uh, industry businesses uh, and uh, as you've noted 1.7 billion in the economy and max is that growing and th does does this type of effort help you grow or absolutely uh, it's growing well there was a recent report put out by URI that cites a growth of about 50 percent between 2002 and 2007 I would say that we've grown every bit of that since 2007 and today uh, if not more um, teaming up with land trusts is a, an integral part I think of the evolution and development of agriculture in the in the state uh, and uh, you know at, at, at this point um, about 80 percent of uh, productive farmland in the state has been developed which leaves about 60,000 acres um, of those 60,000 acres 80 percent of that is not uh, protected Wow! so we have a, a tall order in front of us if we're to preserve agriculture but also to preserve that segment of the economy in but the state. so how do you help do you help try to make sure it's preserved that the land is farmed how do you help well, really, the Land Trust Council, as I mentioned, is a consortium, so it's the efforts to preserve the land is at the local level, at the okay. individual land trust. But we, what we do is, by our efforts 
at the uh, state level with policy issues, legislation, mm -hmm. and, and trying to defend the, the work that the land trusts have done. Some examples are there's always cases of where different uh, interest groups are trying to perhaps change the outcome of uh, what has already been achieved in terms of protecting land. And I'll give one example that we have the Big River uh, Reservoir land in the center of the state. And a few years ago, a proposal was made to take some of that open space land and develop it. And the Rhode Island Land Trust Council was instrumental in stopping that effort and saying to the state, no, this just because the land is is there and, and open, it's, it's there for a purpose. And in that particular instance, it, the purpose was for the protection of the water mm. supply. In the case of agricultural lands, the Land Trust Council will advocate for open space bond on, on the ballot. Where you've been very successful. We've extremely successful. Right. And you've it's had some tremendous. And the, th and the thanks goes to the citizens of Rhode Island who overwhelmingly support open space bonds at levels that uh, are record setting, 70% of the state. And it's not just at communities like Westerly or, or the suburbs, it's the core, the urban core of mm -hmm. our state, you know, Central Falls, Absolutely. Pawtucket, Providence. The voters recognize the value of, uh, of open space land preservation and uh, how important that is for future generations. And part of the community economic development. Absolutely. Um, on the Westerly Land Trust, then, uh, one of the part of the, what we want to do on these shows is really look at Washington County and how it's developing. What is its economy? What are the things it's depending upon? What assets should it grow? So you've done a lot of work through the Westerly Land Trust, both urban and rural. How do you see it? How do you see, is it, is it here that land conservation is huge because you've got a lot of coastal resources but you're battling obviously some of the storms and the problems mm -hmm. is it in the in, in in helping to grow agriculture is it more in even in some of your urban initiatives how do you see all of this helping washington county wow that's a that's a that's a good question it's it's certainly it's a it's a balance and i think the idea um, behind all of this is that we're, we're all kind of we're all in this together, and we might have different outcomes and different different means for doing this kind of this kind of work. But we need we need support at the state level, we need support at the national level, and we absolutely need support at the local level. And community conservation is the biggest piece of this. If mm. if the people in each community believe in in what we're doing here and they get involved and engaged, then we've preserved it for future gener generations and that's really what community conservation is all about. We're going to go to a break, we'll come back to mm -hmm. that, but, but part of what you've done is proven that, right? That's right. And you've engaged people and hopefully they've, they've, they're working off of some of the success that you've had doing that. We'll be right back. Great. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a 600-pound gorilla, able to pack any home in a single move. Look, pulling up to our house, it's a delivery, it's a truck. No, son, that's the Arpen Moving Guy. An advanced mover from the Arpen Group, sent to defeat rogue movers and moving giants that provide bad home moves. He delivers customer satisfaction, quality work, and award-winning service. For a super move, call Arpen at 800-343-3500 or visit arpen.com. The Moving Guy, saving the world from bad moves, one customer at a time. We are back on Renewable Now, down at the Westerly Land Trust building. Um, Max, let's let's carry on just a little bit from where Jen left sure. off. Talk again about about this relationship, about uh, kind of the land that's available, the land that's been developed, mm -hmm. and and what's left for yeah. us here. Well, we're very excited to be able to work with the Land Trust. We think we're just uh, sort of uh, at the tip of the iceberg in terms of some of the. Uh, what our relationship, the foundation's relationship, and our farm's relationship with the Westerly Land Trust can do. Um, I think that the Land Trust is really the centerpiece here as far as um, preserving what's left here in the town. Westerly, Westerly has about 20,000 acres, and about, there's about 500 acres of what we would consider productive farmland left in, in the wow. town. Wow. Um, not all of that has been preserved. Um, mm. I would say probably over half of that 
has been preserved. So in terms of a resilient community, in terms of a community that can produce food for itself in that context, uh, working with the land trust is very, very important. But that brings up a great point that we hear all the time. I mean, one of the complaints is obviously all the mass-produced food, right? Mm -hmm. And the chemicals and the chemicals that run into the rivers and then the long transportation. Mm -hmm. How independent could we ever get in terms of locally growing our food supply? Um, that's a very good question. I, I don't, I believe in states like Rhode Island, uh, we've got a, a major hill climb. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we only produce 1% of what we consume in the state right now. Uh, that shouldn't necessarily be a deterrent though. Uh, I believe that uh, small farms, it's been proven, and we are a case, a case in point, can produce a lot of food on an acre of ground. Mm. We produce on roughly an acre of ground in greenhouses and outside, together with uh, outbuildings, about 20,000 pounds of food. And that's just with two or three of us working. And again, we do it generally here in, well, I guess, what would be called a little more organic Yes. Fashion, less chemicals, less Absol damage to the environment. Absolutely. And so forth. Mm -hmm. It's all around soils. It's working with soils and working with nature. But yes. let's talk about maybe how this might be a mm -hmm. microcosm of, of Washington County, if you mm -hmm. could. Mm -hmm. Is farming important? Well, is there a lot of land preservation? Is there a balance throughout Washington County? Absolutely. The, the South Kingstown Land Trust, another private nonprofit land trust that's been in existence for 31 years, I believe, now, is. Uh, very successful in the state. They've preserved 2,600 acres of the town. Many of those acres are farmland and they're active farmlands. And you, you do ask the question about could we ever be self-sustaining? I think the, the best answer to that is that incrementally mm -hmm. our goal should be to just increase that mm -hmm. uh, ability and uh, mm -hmm. reduce our dependence on the need to mm -hmm. uh, import from California or Chile mm -hmm. or other places that add to the the discussions that you had earlier about global warming and but so every every inch we take forward in yeah. that regard to to get sustainability here enhances our situation I, I agree we should not let ourselves be daunted by that task because it's a very challenging one we just need to continue to take steps forward mm -hmm. and as we do that we will build a stronger and stronger industry but don't we need two things really max uh, we need uh, people willing to work mm -hmm. willing to farm we need production, and mm -hmm. then what about like a distribution? Don't don't you need help, like a farm fresh, as an example, mm. to get your product into schools, into restaurants? Don't do you need both? Well, I think farm fresh is playing a very important role uh, in the evolution of, uh, of agriculture and sort of the rebirth and revitalization of it in the state. At the same time, um, really. Uh, what we need to be looking at in the context of revitalizing agriculture is uh, the a grassroots approach of educating our youth. Mm. And, and is and that what your foundation is doing? Yes, Talk it, about that. Yes, it is. Uh, we, we look at this as a long-term process. I personally believe that we're about 30 to 40 years behind uh, in educating our kids. Wow. Um, it's a fact that uh, you know, today one in five kids eat enough fruits and vegetables during the, during the course of any given day. They mm. should be eating them about five times a day, less than one. Wow. of our youth are doing that. And we're uh, seeing it in health issues, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, well, exactly. Kids, uh, kids entering kindergarten or first grade, about one in five are uh, overweight or obese. Mm -hmm. So are you t teaching them the, the, the basics of, of local produce and, and, and quality foods and better nutrition? What exactly, how are you helping? Sure, yeah, what we do uh, is, is we uh, take a, a, a different approach uh, to, to educating. It's more experiential. Okay. So we, we've taken our foundation and, and combined it with our farm and some of the other neighboring farms here in Westerly. And uh, we're, we're, we're uh, giving the kids an opportunity for some hands-on learning That's where a great as idea. a working educational farm, the kids can come out, they can participate in whatever it is we're doing. That's a great and idea. And tie that into curricula uh, or common core standards, mm -hmm. STEM, science, engineering, technology, and math. Uh, that's very important, but giving them an opportunity to participate in a real-world type of situation um, is compelling Absolutely. in its, own, in its, it's nature. It's so as wonderful. Theodore Roosevelt once put it, we, ha we have to really uh, go from uh, being externally compelled 
to being internally compelled. <laughs> I think the results are going to be much bigger. And Less than a minute? Yep. I, I read a recent study that, that children today spend half as much time outdoors as their parents did. Yep. And that's a trend that we absolutely want to reverse. And I think in partnering with, with farms and with the Ayers Foundation, um, we, can, we can encourage that. That's, that's what the Westerly Land Trust wants to do. We want to invite the public onto the lands. So mm -hmm. I guess, bottom uh, line, you'll get the last word, okay, but great. we should be encouraged by what's absolutely. been going on sure, and absolutely. hopefully the future. Of and this in mix? terms of encouragement, I encourage the viewers out there to visit the uh, Rhode Island Land Trust Council website, rilandtrust.org, and there's some great video on there about our agricultural efforts. There's some uh, trail maps, as was mentioned earlier, that links to your local land trust. So I encourage you to visit that site. Don't you worry. We will community. encourage them as well. Thank you. Excellent job. And I'll be right back. With some Cardi's is focused to give you a better night's sleep by working with those who have the same goal. Like our nation's most recognized sleep specialist, Dr. Bruce. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce. I'm here at Cardi's personally training Nairobi's team to assess your sleep habits and needs, focusing on my four tenets of better sleep, thermo neutrality, balance of pressure, complete relaxation, and tranquil sleep, all of which will help you get a better night's rest. Enjoy an introductory free Dr. Bruce box spring, Cardi's furniture. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Sometimes it is hard to feel good about money we spend through state bonds. Too often we fail to measure their effectiveness. Too often they end up spent in the wrong places. So, it is good to see that the taxpayers in Rhode Island who have continued to approve bonds for open land and agriculture have been rewarded with a cleaner state and real economic benefits from their support. The tie into education and preserving historic sites should not be overlooked. Our Green America Hometown Tour has found countless examples of buildings, natural resources, and sites saved by one generation and used every day by the next. That is a wonderful example of community economics and insightful people like you building a sustainable future. Next week on show three of our Westerly Tour, we venture across Washington County and tell the story of how one pretty amazing nonprofit group, Save the Bay, do so much more than Save the Bay. I'm Peter Arpin for Renewable Now, the show and the tour that bring you the business side.